The introduction of the F4 has been a welcome one in the Cold War scene, but it has immediately led to a race to the bottom. With sparrows being present on the F4, MiGs have hit the deck to hide themselves in the radar clutter. And in response, F4s have pushed themselves even lower to try to have a better chance to see their target. With each side pushing themselves lower and lower, we are flying at treetop level, and it doesn't have to be this way. Today, we will learn how to use the boreside mode with the aspect selection, a pseudo flood mode in the F4. So you can use sparrows at targets below you with or without a wizzo. If this is your first time here, this channel focuses on multiplayer sim gameplay. So if you're into that, please subscribe. To better understand what we are doing, we need to quickly talk about a traditional engagement versus what we will be doing. In a traditional engagement, the wizzo finds a contact on the radar, locks it, and then the pilot maneuvers to engage. The issue is that in multiplayer, people know that wizzos are looking for them, so they hide themselves in the ground clutter. So this is where the boresight comes in. Boresight has a lot of different features, but in short, it basically emits the radar in a fixed position from the plane's nose and grabs anything that is there. There is a lot to unpack here, and for this video, we are going to be solely focusing on the acquisition me method that is based around the aspect knob. This is what I mean by the pseudo flood mode. When we take a step back and think about the boresight mode, we need to understand that it has to algorithmically decide what to grab and what to ignore from the area it is grabbing. Anyone who has used boresight in multiplayer knows that it is not always entirely reliable for targets that are below you and in ground clutter. So this is why we are going to be talking about the acquisition method that is reliant on a bit more human input via the aspect knob. This aspect knob on the Wizzo seat basically gives a bit more information to the Sparrow. Instead of supplying parameters calculated by the radar during a track, the aspect knob tells the Sparrow to look for things that may be flying at a certain closure rate, and then it has a better chance to pick something up. To make this really clear, we can look at this aspect angle selection chart. This basically shows what aspect knob selection we should be using based on the target speed and our own. Let's walk through an example to make this very real. If we are heading north at 500 knots and an enemy is heading south at 500 knots directly at us, then our closure rate is 1000 knots. When we look at the nose aspect, we see that our true airspeed is 500 knots plus 450 or 950 knots with a 150 knots to start and end the gates. That's a range of 800 knots to 1100 knots. So our closure rate of 1000 knots fits right into this. So we should be able to pick up a target using the nose aspect selection. This chart shows this, but how does it translate into the game? The creator of the F4 radar, Nelson, sent me a picture of what's going on under the hood, and it translates basically straight into the game. In here, you can see the Doppler gate or the brackets in yellow. It's looking for something within this gate that is determined by the aspect knob selection and the top and the bottom closure rates of that gate. The radar target is outside of the gate, so it is not being picked. This means that we used the wrong aspect selection or the target's closure rate did not meet our predetermined definition. If your head is spinning, don't worry, I made it easy and I would like to thank Hansa and Nelson for their help in unpacking this. I made this chart that basically breaks this all down. If you take the speed of the target and put a red line like I did, then you can drop points down where the red line meets the gates of each of the aspect selection. This is what is highlighted in light blue, blue, pink, and red. From there, it tells you the angle of the aspect. Now, I am a moron and you may be a moron like me. Trying to graph this all out in the middle of a fight is hard, so I made this even easier. I translated this to an actual protractor so you can get an even better idea because I found this much easier to visualize. Reminder, the closure rate is actually what determines if something is going to be picked up or not. And each selection with the aspect knob gives a different closure rate Doppler gate to search within. If you make a selection and the target is at a speed that falls within the expected closure rate of that aspect selection, then you will pick it up. Now, it may be a bit hard to understand exactly what the exact closure rate is with the enemy. So what we will rely on is the aspect. We have a hope and a dream, and based on their aspect, we will hope that the closure rate will be within the gates that we have defined based on the aspect selection. We try nose if they are coming at us, but at an angle, we can use forward. If they are fleeing, but at an angle, we can try aft. The aspect of the enemy can generally be indicative of the scenario's closure rate. So the way I am thinking about this is to memorize this protractor. There are two oddball ones that fit outside the norms, these are tail selection and wide. 
tail is just based on your own speed and that's it. So if someone is fleeing, then you basically can just select tail and it should be fairly easy to pick them up. This is a really easy one. Why it is different. If we look back at the picture that Nelson gave us, we can basically think of the gates being the entire spectrum. So it is extremely sensitive and for that it can fail to pick things up because the ground clutter is overwhelming it. I have only had success using this when shooting up at things that are above me and there is no terrain around the gun sight. Now that we understand this conceptually, we can go very quickly and do this step by step in order to understand how to action this in the game. All of the keybinds are here. Some of these are obvious, but let me explain step by step how we are going to do this. Step one, we are in AF4 with sparrows. Our master arm is on. We have our pylons powered and we see a target. Step two, we go into page mode. Step three, based on the target's aspect and our own, we decide on an aspect selection. For this scenario, we choose nose because he's coming straight at us. Step three, aspect knob is switched to nose. This is either done by the Wizzo or as the pilot, you can switch to the Wizzo's position and hit the key map quickly and then swap back. Step four, you put the gun sight on the target and fire a sparrow. Step five, you watch the sparrow and it'll be really clear after a few seconds if it is tracking or not. From there, the last thing to do is to either follow up with a future sparrow because your first one did not track or do you change the aspect because the closure rate has suddenly changed? That's it. Now let's talk about the pros and cons of this method of employment. It's very indiscriminate of what it latches onto. It's purely based on closure rate. So it is possible to bop friendlies by accident. You are really eyeballing a lot. So you may trash the sparrows by firing them and they may not pick up the target. So it's not the most efficient method because you might need two sparrows to actually connect. With this all said, it does give a useful tool for your tool belt to employ when you are in a pinch and if you know someone is barreling in at you below altitude or trying to flee away from you below altitude. I hope all of you found this video helpful. It is always interesting when a new module hits multiplayer because everyone starts to wrestle with it in their own ways and some methods take off faster than others. I think this one is a good one to know about so let me know what you think in the comments below. Additionally, I would not be surprised if Heepler adds more key maps uh, from the wizard position to the pilot, so keep that in mind. If you would like to help, please subscribe, as this is the best way to help the channel. Thanks, and have a good one.